Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokia's Mystery, Part 271. And we're discussing today the world to come. <clears throat> Scripture indicates, at the time of the beginning of sorrows, new conditions will prevail upon the earth. Everything is going to radically change. Mm -hmm. We are entering into a totally new reality. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> what we find that conditions that will change will affect life on earth activities in the heavens in all the regions that pertain to the earthly matrix <clears throat> turn to Isaiah 44 verse 6 when you say all the regions that pertain to the earthly matrix does that include the torment regions and hell? Uh, in the sense of, yes, <clears throat> they're going to be more prevalent on the surface world. Okay. Now, I'm going to read this scripture, and then we're going to dissect it. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, <clears throat> I, the first, I, the last, and beside me there is no God. Verse 7, <clears throat> And who, as I, shall call and shall declare it, and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people, and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Now, What's being said here is a declaration <clears throat> by one that's described as the king of Israel. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, in unison, in total harmony, <laughs> is one called his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. So we're looking at the Father and the Son. Mm -hmm. And he's declaring something about his uniqueness his sovereignty and being no uh, where comparable to anybody or anything else. He has no equal. Yes. Don't we usually see Elohim as the Lord of us? Elohim refers to the Father and the Son. Good catch. I like that. Okay. <coughs> well, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, I guess you could get yes, that one. Yes, the Godhead. <laughs> I think he's messing with you, Richard. <laughs> I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put up with this. Praise <laughs> the Lord. In verse 7, it says, And who, as I, shall call and shall declare it? So he's saying, Who beside me is going to be able to, in our vernacular, call the shots? Nobody. <laughs> and set it in order. <clears throat> For me, since I appointed the ancient people. Who is he referring to? Well, let's break it down. The word appointed <coughs> comes from a Hebrew term, sim, S-I-M, which means appointed. It also means purpose. Ancient comes from a Hebrew term, olam, which means old, out of. Memory, it also means everlasting. People. So he's talking about since he purposed the everlasting people, nothing has changed. In other words, he set everything in order from that point. He's talking about Romans 8, 28 to 30. Hmm. Purposed. How do, how, do, how do we know? Oh, because of the purpose. purpose. Okay. He says, since I purposed 
the ancient people, that's Prototokos. Mm -hmm. Nothing has changed because he's laid his plans out and everything is going to go <clears throat> totally as he has directed it. He's declaring here there's nobody that's equal to me. I declare all things. I have set all things in motion. And all things precipitated, all things started from the time I declared, the time I purposed the prototokos, the sons of God. So what we find here, he goes on to say, <clears throat> and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. It is the things that are coming and the things that shall come that will institute the changes that we are going to experience. We're entering into a time of <coughs> radical, which misses it in the next principle. And the scripture indicates the heavens over the earth will begin to shake, setting in motion uncomprehended phenomena on earth. So all the heavens and the heavens above the heavens and all of, the, all of them is going to shake. Everything that constitutes the secondary creation. The heavens are levels of regions and <clears throat> one of the signs of the end is that there's going to be disturbances in them because God has said I'm going to shake the things that are within them how about, how about the earth how about the the earth is going to shake after the heavens okay. I was going to ask as we move further away from the primary creation so in other words the secondary level of heavens, which is closest to the prime. Uh, That's where I'm starting in what I'm about to say. Uh, As we move from the YHVH level of the secondary heavens, does the shaking get more, or is it equal, or less? <coughs> Everything starts off at the same. Okay. It increases in intensity, the same. So everything is Every going level. to radically okay. intensify. How does that affect the YHVH level then, of the secondary heavens? And why would they experience shaking? Because you have evil there. So it's a judgment. Right. So they're going to get it just as bad yeah, as everyone else. Certainly. Yeah. Do they all move into the primary? Since oh no, they can't. <laughs> no. It's going to shake the evil out of them down here. We're talking about the YHVH level only. Yeah. Psalms 82. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So all those to... all those members of the YHVH family. Yeah. Who are unfallen are also going to experience the shaking. Yes. Okay. But then they're going to fall. All right. So then would that be like similar to the righteous and the meek? No. Similar to the righteous in Zephaniah 2 who are fully committed. They won't experience anything, will they? Even though the well, shaking is no, going around. No, yeah, because they're going to be protected. What I'm trying to ask you is, is, it, is that a similar concept as what we just discussed with the YHVH? No, right. because... <clears throat> You're looking at it on a human level. Yeah. So you're going to experience it two different ways. Life in heaven is radically different than life on earth. And so the things that are going to happen in their reality affect them radically different than right. the way the humans okay. are experiencing things in our reality. So is it a level of spirituality? I mean... Yes. So if it's in, if it's in that world, is it, is it will be in the plurality world too, mm -hmm. at the same time? We live in linear existence. They live in plurality. So they're going to experience it differently than we are going to experience it. Okay. But the point is, because they're unfallen, it doesn't affect them in any negative way. No. But they will see it you know, going on around Oh, them. yes. Yeah. Just so like the righteous here are going to be affected in the way the unrighteous are. Right. But they'll know what's going to happen. So we'll be cheering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, among other things, you're going we'll to be, be experiencing it. Look at it this way. When the changes take place, the result of the changes will be positive on the righteous and negative on, right. the, on the unrighteous. That's the key, absolutely. Across Amen. the board. Amen. Thank Across you, the board. <clears throat> but let's go on. <clears throat> so we said... <clears throat> Heavens over the earth 
are going to begin to shake, setting in motion uncomprehended phenomena on the earth. You see this is example, Luke 21, verses 10 to 11. <clears throat> Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines and pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. So you're going to have convulsions taking place across the face of the earth, taking down the Adamic order, and at the same time, <coughs> you're going to have the beginning of shakings in the heavens that are going to result in phenomena that are observable and demonstrable on the earth. People aren't going to have a clue as to what's happening. That's why he calls it fearful sights and great signs. <coughs> the, 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 the human mind is not going to be able to comprehend the significance of what is being seen and experienced in the heavens. Remember I told you last night mm -hmm. some of the dreams that I mm -hmm. had, the phenomena that are going to be taking yep. place. It's already taking place. <clears throat> People are seeing triple suns. They're seeing uh, huge displays of colors in the spectrum of, uh, of the heavens. <clears throat> a lot, a lot of UFO activity. <clears throat> and at the same time, <clears throat> the expansion of this phenomena of the skinwalker phenomena on the earth uh, cryptids being appearing and disappearing the thing with the aliens in um, Florida right. suddenly appearing and disappearing ones, yes. this is all as a result of the changes that are taking place in the reality so at the beginning of sorrows <clears throat> It's going to be magnified, and uh, it starts, and then it increases in intensity until it becomes all-consuming. Yes, Mr. Jones. Yes. Unless whoever is reading this is experiencing what we're now reading about, if they have no one to let them know what's going on. What are they to do, Mr. Jones? I mean, we know what to do because you pointed out to us. You're with us. You're, you're directing us. You're taking us through this. We're explaining it to us, and we're, we're coming to an understanding. But Christians, they don't know this. That's right. But to be fair, if they are pursuing these truths, the Holy Spirit will put someone <coughs> That's in their the key. line. That's the key. That's the key. If they are generally pursuing it. That's the key. That explains why we're here. Everybody's why? responsible to pursue the knowledge. The, the scripture tells us, be alert, watch, <clears throat> and pursue. Seek, you shall find. Mm -hmm. Knock, the door's going to open. Ask, you'll receive. If you're sitting under the foot of a man that's telling you things you want to hear, you're going to be totally isolated from what the reality of things are that are taking place and going to go down with the ship, so to speak. So it's only, a, it's only individual. Now, we want to take a look at how extreme this is going to be. We just read <coughs> Luke 21, verse 11. <coughs> Fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. So things are going to be emanating out of the heavens because of the shaking the activities within the heavens are going to yield phenomena that's going to be received on the earth. Now, <clears throat> turn to verse <clears throat> 25, same chapter, down to verse 26. This is the result. This is the conclusion of the degree to which the heavens are going to be shaking and going to convulsions. 
There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon. Remember what he said. Great sights, fearful, uh, great signs, fearful sights. It's going to intensify to a point <clears throat> where they're going to become consistent, repetitive, affecting the solar system and the immediate environment beyond our planet, the sun, the moon, the stars. <clears throat> there should be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. Uh, and upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. The shaking is going to intensify to the point where it's going to be all consuming the heavens and on the earth. Yes. Can you give us a definition of perplexity? Confusion. Chaos. If you're perplexed, it means you're confused. You don't know what's going on. You can't comprehend the essence and the quintessence of what you're experiencing. Mm. <clears throat> they are not going to comprehend what's going on. They're just going to be a victim of what's taking place to a point where the mind will not be able to uh, no longer <clears throat> accept what the senses are showing them and system breaks but will, down. But will they go looking for understanding, comprehension, or will they be overcome by this? Depends on the individual, how he responds. I would think they'd be in a panic. If you, if you don't have a scenario like we have right here, mm. we meet here every every Sunday, mm. okay, so now we have a continuous explanation of what's going on. If you're not doing that, you're just going to be confused. But even the very elect, depending on how many times they come together and seek and continuously go over this, are going to also be perplexed, confused. It's just a degree of how, how confused will you be. Yeah. We do this every day. So that, that, that uh, supports what you're saying. Absolutely. Not only that, the majority of Christians reject anything that's not comfortable. Anything I haven't they don't want to talk about phenomena. Right. They don't want to talk about things that are happening. They want things that they can conceive of, that they can con uh, uh, can basically become involved in that are de uh, desirable. Because of organized religion, people have been programmed to expect a comfortable life as a Christian. Blessings and all the rest of it. You don't want to hear this stuff about all oh, this is going to shut down, the nations are going to collapse, the kingdoms are going to, they don't want to hear that. Okay, you want to hear it? But when it happens, all right. you're, going to, you're going to faint or drop dead from a heart attack because your mind won't be able to deal with what your senses are showing you. I'm imagining people nowadays, when they hear uh, there's a verse, to be instructed is profitable. I think it's in Isaiah somewhere. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That prophet that they're referring to refers to prosperity in their minds. Yeah. They don't grasp. <laughs> yes, yeah, because so, they've, so, so sad. they've changed it to <coughs> something that they you know, are willing to um, endorse, put this stamp of approval on. You know, they told Jeremiah, they don't tell us this stuff you told us, tell us smooth things. We don't want to hear this. Well, okay, <clears throat> it's going to happen. Do you want to shoot the, the, the messenger? That's not going to help. It's still going to take place. Anyway, <clears throat> so you see the extent to which this thing is going to mm. progress in a very short period of time. <clears throat> which brings us to the next principle. Scripture indicates simultaneously on earth, phenomena will manifest with no natural explanation. In other words, <clears throat> the reality on earth is going to change in such a way as unprecedented phenomena are going to be experienced by the human race in which its mind cannot give an explanation. Joel, second chapter, verse 30 to 31.
And I will show wonders in the heavens, signs in the heavens, fearful sights in the heavens. <coughs> I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire, and pillars of smoke. Phenomenon that appear, this is what he's describing, appear to be blood, fire, pillars of smoke. Hmm. On earth, on earth. On earth. You're going to walk into these things. They're going to be all over the place. People are going to have a clue as to what's going on because it is the <clears throat> new reality phenomena manifesting in the old order. And the mind can't comprehend what's taking place. Yeah. The next scripture, sun turned into darkness. For how long? Signs in the sun, signs in the moon, just before <clears throat> the Lord appears to gather the elect. For these days, months, minutes? Hours. Hours, okay. And then it's light time again? It's <clears throat> not going to be the way that we see it now. Put it that way. But the Lord doesn't come in darkness, like, does it? No, because his brilliance mm -hmm. the shout oh, outshines yeah. everything else. So the light time that he's referring to would be the brilliance of the Lord. Yes. That's how he'd see it from Yes. The, yeah. Yes. His glory is going to light up everything. Mm. Everything's going to change. Everything is going to change. Turn to Genesis, 8th chapter. As we're turning, when you say everything's going to change, meaning at the point that the Lord returns, do you describe that as the uh, appearance of a new reality? Before he appears, everything will have changed. Well, we know that that happens at the, the beginning of sorrows. What I'm asking is, do we see another reality coming when he comes? Yes. Okay. Yes, definitely. You're going to see a shifting reality up until the time of the millennium. Okay. Genesis the 8th chapter, verse 22. <clears throat> While the earth remaineth, the word remaineth, that's translated remaineth, is not the word in Hebrew which is pronounced remaineth. Which means? The word that's translated remaineth <coughs> is <coughs> yom, which is the Hebrew for day. Okay. So what it's saying is while the earth daylights. This is an example of the, of the translators yep. inserting a word that is not in the original Hebrew. While the earth daylights, seed time and harvest and cold and heat, and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Now, what YHVH here is talking about, he instituted the seasons. He institutes the day-night cycle after the flood. <clears throat> he institutes the system that we currently are in. And he's saying, while it continues in the way he has set it in motion <clears throat> it's going to continue until it's disrupted the daylight cycle the yom is going to change to a point where you're not going to have a continuous season progression day night cycle things are going to be interrupted. Why? Because the Luciferians are going to interrupt the system. They have the ability to do so. The system is engineered for the continuance of Adamic life on the surface of the earth. As soon as the Luciferians make their appearance, have a look at the aliens in the, in, in the, in the mall. They're go winking in and out of reality. People are nonplussed because the distortion factor of what they consider to be normal reality is being interfered with. Well, you take that across the board and the system that YHVH instituted for human progression is going to be interrupted. It won't continue the way it is. Yes. So, Mr. Jones, even the very elect, we got to see the video because he found it on the, on the net. So we got to see this video. We see, we see this manifestation of, of a what seems like a wormhole appearing 
in a mall. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're not talking. We don't see wormhole. We don't see wormhole in the mall in the in scripture. So like, so even the very elect are going to be a, a go encounter situations where we're going to wonder what's the best move. So you better be as close to the Lord as you possibly can. If we're not together, then we're going to have to figure it out on our own. So we're going to have to trust he who is in us That's right. and be ready. Mm -hmm. and be ready. That's the promise of the Lord. All the Spirit will guide you if you're open to it. <coughs> if, you're open to it. if you're open to it. Scripture indicates Entrances to the heavens will open, through which many shall pass. So part of this change is the connectors between the surface world and the heavens and the subterranean, which are currently closed, are going to be open. And you're going to have the transit of many people into regions that currently were not accessible. Not because of anything they're doing, but because of the Luciferians' agenda dealing with moving people in places that they want them to go. You put entrances, so there's more than one entrance. Yes. Is yes. it all over the world? Yes. yes. Do you imagine um, the number of abductions, for example, will increase significantly? <laughs> Millions. Number of what? Number of what? Abductions. abductions. Millions. Turn to Deuteronomy 30, verse 4. <clears throat> Millions. <laughs> The human race is going to be cannon fodder for the Luciferians. Yeah. What does that mean? Cannon, cannon fodder means um, <clears throat> something that is expendable oh. and usable <coughs> for somebody else's use. It's a British expression. Oh, is it? Okay. Mm. King's English. Deuteronomy 30, verse 4. <laughs> if any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. <clears throat> now Moses is given a prophetic comprehension. He says, if any of thine be driven out. So that's forceful movement, motion. It's not saying the Lord's doing the driving. Mm -hmm. He says, if any of your descendants are driven out off the earth into the furthest regions of heaven, the Lord's going to gather them back. Mm. <clears throat> well, we see this taking place. Turn to Revelation 12th chapter. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, okay. We're going to Revelation, the 12th chapter. Verse 9 to 12. <clears throat> <clears throat> Oops. <clears throat> this takes place after a tremendous war in heaven drives <clears throat> Satan and his cohorts out of the celestial regions down to the earth environs. Great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So the picture you're getting here is of the conclusion of something that's taken place in the heavens nothing to do with the earth this is all previously done in the heavens beyond the veil of planetary existence now having said that <coughs> and i heard a loud voice saying in heaven actually in the greek is saying in the heavens now is come salvation and strength and kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down <clears throat> which accuses them before our God day and night where did he accuse them 
in the heaven of heavens? How did he accuse them? Well, they had to be in the heavens for him to bring an accusation against them. And this scripture is saying, now those that are in the heavens are free from his accusations. He's been kicked out. Notice what it says. <clears throat> he goes on, <clears throat> verse 12, Now, therefore rejoice <clears throat> ye heavens. Why is he talking about the heavens to rejoice? Because the enemy was there, the brethren were there. The scenario all took place in the heavens. It didn't have anything to do with the earth. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Who is the one that's dwelling in them? The brethren of the voice that's talking about what happened. When you talk about the heavens, it's the plural of all the heavens. It's always plural. The word is plural in the beginning, but it's sometimes translated into singular. The Why brethren? Is that? For context of scripture. Yeah. The brethren of the voice. <coughs> We're still talking about those who were driven. Yes. Okay. Oh, no, the, the brethren are the ones that are driven. The voice are those... No, no, I understand that part, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> okay. So the, the, the brethren, in other words, the were... The brethren are the ones that have been suffering. They, they're, in, they're the ones in verse 11. Yeah, yeah. yes. <clears throat> Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Who's the ones that dwell in them? The survivors. The brethren, those that didn't die. They're still alive. If they weren't alive, you wouldn't tell them to rejoice. Right. <laughs> Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. So here again is telling us, in no uncertain terms, all this took place <laughs> in the heaven. Well, how did they get there? They were taken there. They were driven there by Luciferians. This is the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Yeah, uh, the sea basically <clears throat> is talking about the, the great sea that's currently hidden which oh. is a part of the earth matrix. So it's telling you that seven, Satan has come down and he is going to <clears throat> take out his anger on the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. They're connected at this point. Because he's mad, he's been driven out of heaven. <clears throat> and it goes on to say, Therefore rejoice in heavens and ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth he hath but a short time. So it's giving you a directive. This took place in the heavens. Satan is ousted. You still have the brethren in the heavens. He's come down. Satan's come down to the earth to take out his wrath on the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. But what about those that are still in the heavens? Remember what we said. <clears throat> Moses said, Deuteronomy 30, verse 4, If any of thine be driven out from thence, will the Lord bring them. Turn to Matthew 24, verse 30 to 31. <clears throat> Matthew 24. <clears throat> Thirty to thirty-one. <coughs> then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, <coughs> and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the sound of a trumpet, and they, they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. It's going to gather back those that have been driven into the heavens by the Luciferians. Yes. Do they, they, the voice, gather them through the voice? In other words, is their speaking command what gathers them? Well, yeah, yes. The Lord basically is going to be the one <coughs> that commands them to be gathered back. Right, but it says they shall gather them. The angels. Yeah, and I'm asking if that gathering from the they happens with the voice or because of the voice yes mm. yes okay. so therefore it's pillar angels who are doing that, that action no this is the Lord himself this is the second coming whose voice is it the Lord okay I misunderstood and he, I, thought, I thought it was uh, the 
to the angels. Right? No, that's taking place during the tribulation period. This mm. is after the tribulation, the end of the tribulation, where everybody's together back to earth for the judgment and for the <clears throat> the uh, resurrection of the dead. This is a culmination of all things. <clears throat> the the scripture, verse thirty one. He, the Lord, shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Mm -hmm. That's his voice. Okay. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. <clears throat> so he commands them, bring them back. That's what I was thinking about. That's the, because the day of the angels uh, are that Yeah, point, right? yes. <clears throat> so he says from one end of heaven. So you're looking at a tremendous expanse of <clears throat> habitations in which humans have been placed during the tribulation period. They weren't taken there by UFOs. Mm. They went through portals that connect the earth with these vast regions of the heavens sure. that initially at one time existed before the fall of Lucifer. Are you calling those portals, or some of them, uh, bars, gates, and windows? Mm-hmm. Okay. So what you just now said, all of them or some of the people that are gathered in those things were b before Satan's fall? No, I'm saying the portals existed before Satan's fall. In the primary creation, prior to his fall, everything was connected. <clears throat> the heavens, the earth, the subterranean. You could be on earth, walk into a portal and be on Sissy's Omicron 3. <clears throat> After the fall of Lucifer, everything was separated right. because of judgment. Gotcha. So, after the fall of Lucifer, from that point on, who knows what day it is, to this day, there's a constant flow of humans being taken to, to, to the heavens. No, that's going to happen after the beginning of Sorrow. Okay. However... Because the portal so there's will begin nobody in the heavens now that's been tucked there by no. Satan. No. no, how could it be? He hasn't gotten there yet. He, well, he we're, we're seeing abduction things, Mr. Jones, and I'm trying to fit in. That's that's the lower level nation on a localized basis. Okay. Under the guys, okay. the principalities, they're, uh -huh. they're doing their own thing. The second string. With uh, beside that, the abductions are radically different from what's going to take place here. Right. So this is going to be extremely intense compared to what oh, we're seeing Oh, yeah, no comparison, today. yeah. <clears throat> at the time <clears throat> of what we're looking at here, I remember the earth is not going to be the same as what you're seeing now. Phenomena are going to take place. Uh, I don't care, we're going to be late, but I'm going to give you the scripture. Turn to Amos, the 8th chapter, Richard verse Jones. 9. 8th chapter. Amos 8, verse 9. Praise the Lord. <laughs> right after <clears throat> Joel. Oh, okay. <clears throat> this is in keeping with the tremendous changes that are going to take place. I know it's difficult to comprehend it from a human perspective, but this thing that we're living in now is a temporary arrangement. The people think it's so permanent. Mm. It isn't. Eighth chapter? Yeah. Let me say, verse eight, uh, ch chapter 8, verse 9. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. <laughs> so the day-night cycle is going to be interfered with. The progression of seasons is going to be interfered with. Because it's only temporary. It's only here to accommodate the human race. Luciferians aren't going to perpetuate it because they're created for something radically different. Yeah. 